As always, this is not legal advice. This is our commentary on immigration here in New Zealand. If you're looking for legal advice, get in contact with us at our website or at the uh, email in the description down below. It's been an exceptional few days. We're recovering from the RV21 uh, phase two from two weeks ago and from the I suppose, incorrect or misleading information that's been coming out of immigration New Zealand um, as a result of that and also about how that's going to work when it comes to the allocation. Um, I wanted to do a video about that, correcting it, a lot of misinformation going around online from uh, misinterpreting what immigration has been saying through to some advisors saying things that weren't perhaps quite on point. We've also had the massive step to border exception changes come through yesterday for those who are the other critical worker going to one and a half median and the how that's going to impact bringing in your partners but also how it's going to impact those who want to apply for residence from bringing um, that higher value uh, employee. That is being planned for a video as well. That was being planned for a video this week. Uh, however, we sort of thought there was a greater need to cover the border exception that was announced today in regards to the families of Ukrainians uh, who are onshore in New Zealand as being a more pressing matter with what's going on in Ukraine. Now my thanks to Mahi for uh, Ukraine for helping to push this through. We will link to their uh, Facebook group in the description down below and also to their website. Um, and they've helped to push this through, which is, which is fantastic. Now, it is not a perfect solution. Uh, that would have been completely online, but it is something which does give immigration that, something they really wanted to do. We saw immigration want to help us so much get these Ukrainian visas through and where they could, they were pushing them through at an amazing rate. But there was some which they were being uh, prevented from doing because the minister's approval was required to allow them to do those visas. This now gives the minister's approval for those ones to be processed under this scheme. Uh, and I'm sure that they will be very happy at immigration to be able to now help those further families to uh, come to a safe place that is New Zealand. Now this is covered under Amendment Circular 2022-15, it was released today and it has effect from today. Uh, it won't be available online just yet or the changes won't be available on the manual just yet, they will come in the next few days. Um, but we're going to cover a few of the points here. Um, I think if you go through the INZ 1371, which we're going to cover here as well, that will give you an idea as to what is the requirements are. We're going to cover a few of the issues here as we go through. Now it's under H uh, section of the operation manual, which is the border exception section. It's under H8 is the new border exception section, which is just for this. Um, the first thing I want to mention is that this does not require the person to be in Ukraine at present. It does require them to have been ordinarily resident in Ukraine as at January 2022. So someone who lives there uh, or was living there at the start of the year and has now escaped will still be uh, covered by this. Now, it isn't clear how they're going to ask people to show that they were present or resident in Ukraine in t January 2022 um, or how they're going to test that. I can't see the way of them testing it in a fair or logical way. Uh, I think as you were escaping the war, you're not going to quickly you know, grab some documents to show your address for immigration reasons. You're going to get out of there and get somewhere safe. So I can't see immigration asking people to prove that they were resident in Ukraine at that date. But it means that those of you who were perhaps living somewhere else, you won't be covered by this because you weren't resident in Ukraine uh, as at January 2022, or at least not ordinarily resident there. Um, now, like most border exceptions, it is a two-stage process and it works through a New Zealand sponsor. Now, there are some several terms here we're going to be covering later in this video, um, and we'll come to those so you understand what they mean. Now, the sponsor completes the INZ1371 form. This is a new form that came out today, uh, in which they nominate um, a member of their family or members of their family who they wish to sponsor to come to New Zealand. Now, we'll link to the INZ1371 in the form in the description down below. Now, this is the uh, INZ1371 form. It is the new form. Um, it is filled out by the sponsor. This is the unusual thing. This is the first form I can think of where it's actually filled out by the sponsor and not by the applicant themselves, perhaps the exception of the um, um, other critical worker form. Now, to be a New Zealand sponsor, you have to be ordinarily resident in New Zealand. You have to be a New Zealand citizen or a holder of a current residence class visa. You must have been born in Ukraine, hold or have previously held Ukrainian citizenship, 
or be a permanent resident of Ukraine. Now that is a right to be a resident in Ukraine, but not actually living in Ukraine because you must be living in New Zealand or ordinary resident in New Zealand. Um, and you must be an acceptable sponsor for a temporary visa. That is um, a term, I'm not going to go into what that term means, it's a bit more complicated, um, but it generally comes down to um, character issues. Now, you submit it on behalf of the members of the family, um, also their partners and children will come to that as well. When you agree to sponsor them, you are undertaking to cover their costs, meaning their place to live, their food, things like that. Um, now, definitions. Um, members will come to and will cover that. Uh, dependent children will come to that as well. Important thing here is that the applications are sent to an email address. So you scan it to that address. You do not uh, post it or courier it. You send it by email. That lets immigration get into it straight away. Now, the form itself is pretty simple. Sponsors details, sponsors contact information. Um, make sure that they are acceptable whether you know whether you're a citizen or a resident and you must be one of those boxes there Ukrainian born there citizen was a citizen uh, you're a citizen currently or you're a, a PR of Ukraine and you must be living in New Zealand or ordinarily resident in New Zealand uh, you are declaring that you will cover all of the costs of the person um, and this is where you fill out the members forms now it is 13 pages long but don't panic about that because you have section E is basically the nominee also the nominee's family, so it could be their partner and their dependent children. Um, you then have uh, information, uh, immigration advisor or lawyer's details, and of course their declaration that they're assist, um, assisting the sponsor. And then you have the another member of the family, section eight, section I, same thing, J, same thing, K, same thing, and L. The same thing. So it is uh, allowing for a number of members of your family, and of course each of those can also have their partner and children um, included. Now family members uh, have been expanded beyond the usual. Typically we see partners or dependent children being what is considered a family. Now here under uh, H820.5 this is expanded to include the sponsor's parent, the grandparents, siblings and adult children. Now for parents that can be biological or adoptive parents and it can include the uh, parent's partner, the parent has perhaps passed away uh, as long as there was a predominant period of the um, sponsor's life where they were uh, part of their life as a child. Now the nominated family can also of course, bring in their children and their uh, parents. For example, a sponsor's adult child can be uh, sponsored to come across to the country. Um, the adult child can bring in their own parent and their own dependent children, sorry, their own partner and their dependent children, but that partner and dependent children um, of the adult child will need to meet those requirements for partners and dependent children that typically you would have from with Immigration New Zealand. Um, so again, yeah, once completed, the INZ1371 goes off to Immigration New Zealand and it goes to that special Ukraine EOI at mbie.govt.nz uh, email address. I will copy that to the description down below, uh, but do not post it. It goes by email. Now at that point, the immigration officer, uh, if the requirements are met, should provide the applicants an opportunity to apply for an actual visa via the website. That's at the point where you'll provide passports things like that now the visas granted will be for two years now that's either from two years from when the visa is granted if they are onshore or it'll be two years uh, if they are offshore from the point that they arrive within the country um, those who are 16 and under will get a student visa those who are 17 or 18 will be given either an open work visa or a student visa depending on the situation I expect the officer will talk to them and say hey what are your plans for that period are you still studying are you going to go and work those who are 19 and older will get an open work visa which is fantastic because with a two-year visa they need to go out there and best support themselves um, medicals and x-rays are not required which makes sense because it's going to be hard to get done same with police certificates, they are not required for this visa. If they were to apply for future visas when onshore, they would then require them at that point most likely. But at least for now, to get them into the country, they're not required to provide medicals, x-rays or police certificates. Um, and that is the process. Uh, the visa should then be granted uh, as long as everything was met and provided as required allow them to come to New Zealand and to cross that border. Now MIQ requirements will remain, so uh, those who are double vaccinated with an authorised vaccination 
um, can go into home isolation. There is a list of about 30 vaccines which the Ministry of Health does um, sort of see as being uh, permissible when it comes to vaccinations. You need to provide evidence of that vaccination, otherwise you have to go into MIQ on arrival. Um, and But that is about it. Now we've said it before that immigration staff really do want to sort of help these uh, Ukrainian refugees and so people escaping that situation to come to New Zealand, but they were being very much blocked from doing so because the law just did not allow it unless they were partners or dependent children. Uh, this provides those immigration staff with an option to sort of allow those families to bring to come into the country uh, to somewhere where it is safe and to be with their families here on shore, which is a fantastic change. So again, thank you to Mahi uh, for Ukraine to happen to get this pushed through. Uh, but that is it for today's video. We will come back with those other videos when we can. Uh, until then, kia kaha and stay safe.